Welcome to Red Speak. Here we present the classiest stories of cheating and revenge from Reddit. GF got pregnant of a fair partner's child. Tried to pin it on me. I had a narrow escape from this. Hello everyone. I'm 27M, and I recently broke up with my ex-girlfriend Cassia, 25F, because she did the unthinkable and broke my trust. Cassia and I dated for four years, we were so in love, I never thought she would cheat on me. The first day Cassia and I met was at a store. She worked there as the store manager, and I had gone there for a refund for something I purchased some days earlier. Somehow, I had a slight altercation with the lady who attended to me, and Cassia had to step in to sort out things between us. When Cassia and I started dating, I never expected that we would go as long as dating for four years. At the beginning of our relationship, I only wanted to date her for companionship and see where that would lead us. But I was crazily in love with her when we celebrated our first anniversary. She was very jovial, and I loved how she made me happy. Of all my previous relationships, Cassia was the only girl who gave me her 100% love. At least, I believe so. She always had a way of making me feel special, treated me with love, and she was very kind to me. A year and six months after we started dating, Cassia moved in with me. I asked her to move in with me because I wanted us to be together all the time, spend time together, and explore the different areas of our relationship. I was glad I finally got to experience genuine love. On my end, I loved Cassia and reciprocated everything. There was not a time she gifted me that I didn't get her something in return. Sometimes, I would even get her flowers and have special packages delivered to her at work without any occasion as well. This is to say that I also took care of Cassia, and I tried my best to be a good boyfriend. We were both working and planned to save enough money to start an online business before we married. Apart from being a hardworking woman, I loved Cassia because she dreamed big and always dared to do the things that seemed impossible. She was a great conversationalist, and I looked forward to spending the rest of my life with her. By the third year of our relationship, we had gathered enough money to start our online business. We invested a lot in it, but even with that, things went differently than planned. We suffered many losses before we knew it. Almost half of our money went down the drain. We could not sell the products we ordered. We had to start marketing them to our friends and colleagues at work so they could at least get them at a discounted price. It was after our new business failed that Cassia and I began to have issues. When our problems started, I thought the stress of the business was taking its toll on us. It affected our finances a lot, and because of that, we had to do extra jobs to keep us together until we bounced back. It was Cassia's idea to get an additional job. Although I didn't like the idea, especially since my day job was very demanding, I had no choice. While I resorted to being an Uber driver in the evenings, Cassia got a job as a mixologist at a famous restaurant in our town. It was a restaurant where most rich people loved to hang out. Cassia always wanted to be a mixologist because she thought she was naturally good at it. So, when the opportunity presented itself, she took the offer. The pay was also great. Like me, she only had to work in the evenings, but as time passed, things changed. The first change I noticed with Cassia was that our communication dropped. Earlier, she used to tell me everything. Cassia used to tell me about the celebrities she saw. The crazy things that happened at the restaurant while she was on shift, and even the men hitting on her. Whenever she told me about the men, we laughed and made jokes. I was never worried about the men because I trusted her. And then for the three years we had been together, she never gave me a reason to suspect her of anything. When our communication dropped, I thought it was because of the stress of working two jobs and her standing all night. Also, we were always exhausted when we came home. All we'd do was eat and shower. I expected that on weekends, which was her day off, we would shake off the stress and return to being ourselves, but that didn't happen. Instead, on weekends, she would stay in bed for hours, and when she eventually woke up, she'd do the house chores and laundry. We had very little time to talk. I'd even try to bring up hot topics for discussion, but she would answer with less excitement or show no interest in the conversation every time I tried to talk to her. As weeks passed, we became more distant. We weren't enjoying each other's company like we used to. At that time, the only thing that mattered to Cassia was work. She'd leave the house early in the morning for her day job and come home later at night, after she was done with her second job. 
As if a drop in our conversation was not enough, Cassia started sleeping out. The first night she slept out, she claimed she had gone out with her fellow girlfriends from the restaurant to unwind from the day's stress, and they stayed out late. So, she had to crash at one of their houses because she was wasted and could not drive home. I wasn't very pleased with her excuse that day, but believed her. I expected that would be the only time it happened, but Cassia turned it into a new habit. She would usually come home by four in the morning, reeking of alcohol. Things got so bad that she would have severe hangovers and miss work on the next day. Ultimately, she had to quit her day job to focus more on her job as a mixologist. The only good thing about being a mixologist was her pay was good and she got handsome tips from the customers. With her new full-time job as a mixologist, I expected Cassia to change for the better. But she didn't. Instead, we started fighting and arguing all the time, which never happened before. Cassia used to be calm and respectful and barely raised her voice on me, but after working full-time as a mixologist, she transformed into an angry lioness. She became angry all the time. If she cooked for us, and I complained about overcooked meal, Cassia would yell at me and stop making my meals for the next couple of days. In addition to the changes in her attitude, I noticed Cassia started wearing expensive stuff. She started shopping for designer bags, shoes, scarves, clothes, and other feminine stuff. She even got herself a costly perfume she had been talking about from the first year of our relationship. And I could tell that they were expensive by merely looking at them. When I asked Cassia how she could afford those kinds of expensive shoes, bags, and clothes, she told me she got a very good tip from one of their celebrity clients and decided to use the money to shop for the things she always wanted. To show how much I trusted her, I believed her and watched as she continued to bring more expensive stuff back home until one day. That day, I was in the living room watching my favorite murder mystery shows at night and realized that my phone was almost dying. I searched for my charger and remembered leaving it in our room. This was a weekend, so Cassia was already home and had gone to bed early because she complained of a headache. We were cool with each other on that particular day and got intimate earlier that evening. On going to the room to grab the charger, I saw that Cassia was using my charger to charge her phone. I checked to see if her battery was full. When her phone screen came on, I saw a couple of WhatsApp messages from a particular contact. The person asked if Cassia got the last gift he had sent her. I immediately knew I had to read the whole message. I unlocked Cassia's phone with her fingerprint and checked the WhatsApp message. The WhatsApp message was between her and a well-known DJ in our state. There weren't any previous messages between them except the ones he sent to her, and from what I gathered, the DJ was behind all the expensive stuff Cassia had been bringing home. Though there wasn't a lot of conversation between them, I suspected that something was going on between the two of them. After I read the messages, I was so mad Cassia had been lying to me for weeks. I wanted to let it slide, but when I saw her sleeping peacefully, I wondered how many times she had lied to me in the past, and I fell for it. As a man, I knew no man would take her shopping out of the goodness of his heart, and if the DJ continuously gifted her, then it meant they were up to something. Without thinking twice, I woke Cassia from her peaceful sleep, asked her why she had lied to me, and then showed her the messages. She sat in bed for a few seconds, then said he was only her friend and nothing else. My guts told me she was lying, but I kept my cool. The DJ even mentioned something about them, doing it again, but Cassia claimed she was referring to them shopping again. The mere fact that she had been deceiving me the whole time broke my heart. I didn't even realize when I started yelling at her, and to my surprise, she yelled back. She said I was being a baby and was making a mountain out of a molehill over gifts. Then she said that I had no right to go through her phone or messages for any reason, and that I needed to apologize. Hearing that enraged me the more. That was the last thing I expected her to say, especially in that situation. When I saw that she showed no remorse for lying to me, I told her to either return all the gifts she had gotten from him or our relationship would end. At that moment, I thought she would apologize and agree to return the gifts if nothing was going on between them, as she claimed. Surprisingly, Cassia laughed and blatantly told me I was joking if I thought she would choose our relationship over gifts worth thousands of dollars. Then she laughed wore her sleep mask, and went to bed again. I stood by the bedside and watched the woman who used to talk to me with so much respect and valued our relationship slap me in the face with her words. 
I was disappointed when I realized she chose the expensive gifts over our relationship of more than three years. By the time she woke up in the morning, I was gone. I took some of my clothes and left the house to show her how serious I was. Even though I could not accuse her of cheating, I could not stand her disrespect. I even spoke to one of my close friends, and he affirmed that Cassia was likely sleeping with the famous DJ to get all those gifts. Cassia did not call or send a message the first few days after I left our apartment. In fact, a whole week passed, and we didn't speak to each other. This was the first time this happened in our relationship, and deep down, I was struggling with myself. Distancing myself from her like that was not something I was used to. The second week passed, and I still didn't hear from her. Meanwhile, she constantly posted on Facebook and WhatsApp and didn't look like she missed me. In the third week, just when I decided to go back home and confront her, Cassia called me. When she called me, she sounded very different on the phone and asked me to come home so we could sort things out between us. Eventually, I went home that day, and as soon as I stepped inside our house, she hugged me tightly. Once we settled down, Cassia began to tell me how selfish and stupid she had been, and she was sorry for hurting my feelings with her actions. She told me she returned all the gifts because she realized what we had was worth more than any expensive gift. I was so relieved to hear that and happy Cassia had come to her senses. She also promised to change and treat me better, adding that she wouldn't lie to me anymore. After apologizing, she told me she had something important to tell me. She returned with a pregnancy test strip and the results showed she was positive. I was so happy when she told me she wanted us to keep the baby. I knew having a baby in the picture meant our relationship was about to enter the next level and it was something I had been looking forward to. I planned to propose to Cassia when I noticed the changes. So, when I found out she was pregnant, I was sure she would change positively, and I would finally propose to her. Months after Cassia and I settled our differences, things improved between us. She became more respectful and caring and would return home in time. I never checked her phone again because she told me she stopped communicating with the DJ and returned all his gifts. Instead, I focused more on preparing to be a dad and still work double jobs to meet the demands of having a baby. On my 27th birthday, I returned home to a surprise birthday party organized by Cassia. She had invited a few of our mutual close friends, and guess what? She proposed to me. I felt embarrassed when she went down on one knee to ask me to marry her, but I said yes. I had no reason to say no, mainly because we were about to have a baby together and it didn't matter if I proposed or she did. I was even glad she took such a bold step. Just two days ago, after Cassia proposed to me in front of our friends, I walked in on her, making a call in our room. As soon as she saw me, she ended the call and pretended she was doing something else. The moment she did that, I knew she was up to no good, so I acted like I had not seen anything else and went into the bathroom to shower. Later that night, I pretended to go to bed before her so she could have the opportunity to talk to the same person again. I waited for her to sleep to check her phone again. When I checked her phone after she slept, I saw a conversation between her and the same DJ she told me she stopped talking to. Their conversation broke my heart. I found out I wasn't responsible for the child Cassia was carrying. The DJ was the baby's father. He and Cassia planned to fool me to take full responsibility for the child. The DJ told her he wasn't ready to commit to the child, and that's when Cassia suggested that I play the fatherly figure while the DJ would send her money for the child monthly. I have never been so heartbroken, and as I share this, I don't know whether to confront Cassia. How could she be wicked and plan to do such a terrible thing to me? I left the house yesterday and went to a motel and haven't gotten out of the room for days now. What do I do? I wish there was a way I could punish Cassia for what she has done to me. Meanwhile, I have no clue how to deal with this heartbreak. I don't think I can survive another week in this state. Please help with suggestions. I'll be reading the comments. Thank you. Reaction before update. Honestly, OP, I feel like you should have known the baby wasn't yours. You knew she was messing around with you. So the fact that you didn't at least question it is bizarre. Of course she'd come crawling back once she realized she wasn't going to get any support from the baby's father. Moreover, instead of telling everyone she got impregnated by some DJ, she had to tell you it was yours to save face. You aren't responsible for her irresponsibility. 
you shouldn't feel guilty for not wanting to pick up the pieces of something that you didn't help cook up. She needs to deal with this on her own. Cut the cord. Moving to first update. Hi everyone, thank you for your comments. I'm so surprised you're all saying Cassia was using me when I returned home. I never saw things that way. When she called me and said we wanted to settle, I was happy because I still loved her, and it wouldn't have made sense if our almost four years plus of relationship had gone because of some gifts. I stopped checking her phone because she convinced me she wasn't having an affair with him and swore on her late mother's grave that she would never cheat on me. She had never cheated on me before, so I believed her. When I learned I wasn't the father of her child, she was already three months gone. And as I make this update, she's getting to her fifth month now. You all suggested that I do not let Cassia know that I know about the truth. Doing this has been one of the most challenging things I have ever done. Because of her infidelity, how I see her has changed, and so much more has also changed. I no longer respect her, knowing she could open her legs for anyone who could give an expensive gift. Meanwhile, Cassia has noticed the changes and complained so much lately. I no longer care for her or do the stupid things I used to do for her before. I usually stay out late and return early in the morning so I don't see her stupid face. She's been very emotional lately. I think it's the pregnancy hormones, but even though she'd shed a whole bucket of tears, I have no love left for her. She's been complaining bitterly, and she's been saying that I'm not ready to be a father yet, and she regrets keeping the baby because I'm making things so tough for her. She even goes as far as calling me names at the slightest provocation, and no matter what she says to me, I still act like I don't care. I think I'm ready to ask for that DNA test now. I know I'm not the father yet, I want her to go through this humiliation, just a mere confrontation is not enough. She's already five months gone and I want to leave her now that I know she will need me the most. She no longer goes to work. She just stays at home because of her pregnancy, and she depends on me to be there for her and the DJ for money. I can't wait to see how miserable she will be when I'm gone. I will make another update after the paternity test results are out. Reading out comments before second update. The fact that you've lasted this long is shocking. Why waste your time here? You're only torturing yourself. Update 2. Hello all. My apologies for not making this update on time. I needed time to relocate and settle down first. In my last update, I said I'd demand a paternity test from Cassia just to humiliate her. I didn't directly accuse her of cheating because I knew she would deny it. I told her I needed a paternity test to ensure the baby was mine, and she said she wouldn't do so. She began to say that I didn't trust her and that I was letting all the funny things I read online get into my head. She even said she couldn't believe I was accusing her of infidelity after everything we had been through together. To show how dramatic she was, she called me names and said she was disappointed I would think she could get pregnant for someone else and then try to pin the pregnancy on me. She was literally crying like a baby when she said all of this, and if I had not read their chat myself, I would have felt so bad for asking for a paternity test. I allowed her to talk and cry and watched her turn everything on me. She said I was the one who acted like I didn't want the baby anymore, yet I still asked for a paternity test and that I'd be the worst father. When I had enough of her drama, I told her that we needed to do a paternity test, and this time around, she flipped and rained insults on me. She had no idea I was messing with her, and I wanted her to suffer for everything she had done to me. Later that night, after she went to bed early as usual, I packed my bags and left her a small note on my pillow. I mentioned that I knew I wasn't the baby's father and wished her a miserable life. When she saw the note the next morning, she called me and asked us to meet and talk as adults. I told her we were done, and she started crying over the phone. She admitted that she thought I wasn't the baby's father, but by spending time with her, she claimed I could become the baby's father because I was a good man, and it didn't matter if we were biologically not related. That was one of the craziest things I had heard, and it sounded funny too. Before I ended the call on her, I told her to go back to her DJ and enjoy raising their child together. I was expecting her to flip again or something, but she told me the DJ was no longer in the picture. It turned out the DJ was not the only person she was having an affair with. They were like four of them. They all took her shopping on different days. The DJ heard rumors of her multiple partners and decided to do a test. When the result was out, he wasn't a match either. Long story short, 
she was looking for someone to pin the pregnancy. And I ruined things for her when I found out I wasn't the father. I ended up blocking her number and warned her to never call me again. She tried to get our friends to talk to me, but they all shunned her when they heard the truth from me. Now, she's all alone and has no one to turn to. She also has no money because she stopped working, and everything is messed up. I wanted to fit in with her new circle of friends, and I ruined our relationship. Anyway, it's better we have ended things now than me raising her child like my own, only to discover years later that I am not the father. Thank you everyone for your support and suggestions. You're the best. What do you make of OP's story? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today on Red Speak. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.